Hey Vsauce, Dennis here, and today I'll be talking about my experience with Roblox Studio. Now some of you may have heard of Roblox, but don't know what Roblox Studio is. Roblox Studio is the software created by Roblox for making games on their platform, and for the past year I've been learning what the software is, what others have done with it, and what I can accomplish with it. So here is what I've learned in the past year. The date was March 6th, 2020. I was bored out of my mind doing absolutely nothing over quarantine, and I needed something to do. I had been playing Roblox constantly over the break, and had even opened Roblox Studio before, but never actually to make something. I decided to change that that day, and I opened Roblox Studio with the intention of leaving with something made. I called up my friend Harrison, who had made small games in the past, and asked him if he could help me design something, to which he agreed. He showed me the basics of the platform, how to navigate menus, select objects, resize parts, and I familiarized myself with the tools I had. I was done making my first creation after about two hours of just messing around, and it admittedly was not very good. The next day I was talking to some friends online when I mentioned messing around in Studio, and they recommended a plugin for it called Studio Plus, and it was the single most useful tool in getting me started. The plugin features many courses that walk you through the basics of scripting, modeling, and publishing your creations. And after the few next days, I messed around with the courses they offered. I managed to make a basic castle that I was pretty proud of. A few days later, on March 17th, I worked on an obstacle course using the Course Studio Plus ad. I learned how to make parts invisible, but still physical, how to use scripts to change part properties, and worked on a very basic map. The course was a lot of fun to play around with, and I had a great time creating a basic obstacle course to mess around. Then for the next month, nothing really happened. I was preoccupied with other interests and didn't have a project to work on in Studio, so I just didn't mess with it. But on April 14th, I started up Studio to create a place of my own to hang out with friends. I ended up working on for two hours. It was a small room floating in an empty void filled with couches, some chairs, and a countertop microwave, which we ended up just calling Chill Room. It wasn't much, but we were sure proud of it. I invited Harrison to help me work on it, and we made a secret room together with a teleport script I looked up online. I invited friends to come look at it, and they all enjoyed hanging out at the place. After the initial success of my creation, I kept working on it for the next few days, adding extra things to the room, and eventually making more rooms. I started learning more about scripting and looking into making decoration do more than just look good. Using a tutorial I found online, I made it possible to get snacks from a snack bar it added in the second room, which was the thing that opened me up to the world of scripting for the first time. Me and Harrison were coming up with new room ideas for the next update, and we had the genius idea of a party room. I worked on the design with another snack bar and a DJ booth, while Harrison made a working dance floor with changing colors. We hosted a party to open the new room since we were excited to show off our work, and a lot of people turned up. We had a great time hanging out in the dance room and just screwing around in the place I had made. Now, I can't talk about my experience with Studio without mentioning the group I accidentally founded. This cult start is the reason I'm still working with the platform today. During the party revealing the dance room, I got everyone to look the same, and we ran around someone else's game with about 10 people looking like the same person. We had such a great time confusing the people there that we did it again the next day at a different game. Eventually, we just decided to make a group, and 90% of my studio work from then on out was for that group I'd accidentally created. My game is looking a bit disorganized, with all the rooms being on one side of the map, so me and Harrison fixed it by completely overhauling the map and reorganizing the rooms, adding three more rooms with a small vent system to move around a few of them. We were so proud of our improvement to the small game we had created, and were proud of the final product we had made. Coming back to the group I made, we needed a base of operations, and we quickly realized that showroom just wasn't going to cut it. We tried a few renovations to make it work, but it just wasn't big enough of a space. After a few days, Harrison and I decided we need to make a headquarters for our group. After a bit of planning and designing, I was ready to create. The original version of Headquarters consisted of two stories. On the first floor, there were five rooms, the starting area, a lounge with food, an office room, a TV room, and a viewing area for the admins to oversee the people below. On the second, a meeting room, a workout room, a locker room for changing into uniform and inspection, and a teleporter to take us to other games. We finally launched the project after a lot of development, and it was really popular with the group. All of the positive feedback we received gave us reason to work on it more, which we did a lot over the next couple of months. While I worked on building of new areas, Harrison kept himself busy with scripting challenges reigning from a moving scanner that only allowed certain people to pass to the functionality of the aforementioned teleporter. 
we would just hang out at headquarters and we accidentally started recruiting new people as they would just join friends and find our group. One of the best and worst things to come out of this was the creation of a Discord server for our group. It's still my main friend group today. Even if it caused a lot of unnecessary drama a few times. I had just learned about animation on Roblox and I really wanted to try my hand at that. I went searching for a tutorial on the subject and I found out how to create animations, save them, and even how to trigger them in game. The first real animation I made was a badly remade Kazatsky kick, but I was so proud of it, and everyone in the group absolutely loved it. Now, I knew how to animate, and I knew how to play animations, but I didn't know how to play animations only when you were sitting on one of the many chairs headquarters had. I looked into it a bit, and I found a model someone made that automatically plays animations when you sit and stops them when you get up. Over the next week or so, I animated some 24 chairs to have sitting animations. Each one was unique. It was the biggest change headquarters had had in a long time. Harrison was still an active developer when we realized that HQ just wasn't going to be able to get any bigger. The map was already big and annoying to navigate around because of how it extended everywhere. It was around this time that we toyed with the idea of just remodeling it to look nicer and easier to navigate. We generated some concepts for bases and finally picked a theme for the build. It was sort of a dark sci-fi facility thing, with dark concrete walls, and an industrial lift as the main entrance. I got to making a layout of the building, generating concept art, and planning it out in general. They had an industrial lift as the main entrance, and it led into a main area, with the uh, rooms extending out from there. After building the rooms, they needed to be decorated with furniture, boxes, and items. Now, since we needed items, I needed to create models. I hadn't had much experience creating models, but I was pretty confident. I took a lot of inspiration from another Roblox game that had amazing assets, and I tried to replicate many of them for use in our new place. After around two hours or so of modeling, I ended up with a plethora of models to decorate our new HQ with, one of which was a classic cafeteria long bench that we used for our meeting room. It ended up being a huge hit during the release because everyone knew what it was and could relate to using them at school. We held a massive event where where we saw our old headquarters collapse. It, it just, it, it fell apart. And we unveiled the new one and let everyone get used to it. It was a super fun event to host, and it showed off our hard work on the place greatly. The group had a lot of fun at the new headquarters, and we added extra rooms, made some cool stuff, and we're just enjoying the new place when Calamity struck. Somewhere along the line, a backdoor script had entered the place. Now, what a backdoor script does it allows someone to have foreign access to your game and gives them, to the gives them the ability to mess with your creation. This meant all of our hard work, all of our dedication to the project, could be compromised. It was a heartbreaking day, and for a solid week, we had no place of operations. After a while, we decided to move the new headquarters over to a different game to preserve our creation, and we successfully moved house with the game intact. We didn't have much motivation to do anything for a while, and I didn't have time to do anything because of the marching season. I made some sitting animations in October, and Harrison messed around with other things like an elevator and a shopkeeper upstairs, but nothing major happened. Speaking of October, I held a, smart ha a small Halloween party in the headquarters, adding some pumpkins and a jukebox with Halloween tunes. A lot of people actually showed up. We had a great time that night, and that's what I did for Halloween last year. A few months had gone by, and Christmas was fast approaching. The group had a recent spike in activity, so I decided to give HQ a Christmas-style touch-up. I spent around five hours across the week adding Christmas lights, presents, ornaments, and other Christmas decorations all around the map. The very light change added so much to the place, and it made it seem so lively. I was tempted to keep it after Christmas, but I couldn't keep it up forever. During this event, I wanted to give a few members a present for being around and helping create a friend group during a time of isolation. So I started creating tools for them to have, and asked what kind of stuff they would like. Over the course of five days, I made around nine presents. It was a pretty unique and fun learning experience. I got to play around with coding that I wasn't able to do beforehand because I had nothing to work on for a long time. Christmas finally came, and with it I got a new laptop for running games better. We hosted the Christmas party with a lot of people showing up, and I proudly presented my presents to everyone one at a time. Many of the people already knew what the gift was, except for the receiver. And it was a smashing success. The gifts are still in the game today, but everyone's still enjoying them. But a few days later, we had to take down the Christmas decorations. After the Christmas event, Harrison was the main developer. He added a few things here and there to make it interesting, just as the addition of guns he created himself, which is a big scripting challenge. Shout out to him for learning so much. 
After this point, headquarters was just a place for us to test ideas and concepts and see if we can make them work. Like my next project. I decided to make a worn down secret area, which gave me the freedom uh, to test building designs and work with different styles of building. After picking a theme, I made the small layout and made the models to decorate it with. It has been the most detailed building I've made yet, and I love how it turned out. I also made it partly functional, with doors being able to be breached and an arsenal of weapons being available. I made the server have a code to be unlocked, with the scripting being completely unoptimized, but still functional. After I created the Mafia Room, that was it for my HQ work. I didn't have anything else to work on it in studio, other than a few things here and there. I was looking for something to do, and I heard about this plugin for studio called Moon Animator. It focuses on cinematic animations, and after watching a few tutorials, I messed with some stuff to make my first animation. It wasn't very good, but it was something to be proud of. In the group, we had recently promoted one of our most active members of our group, and they could now work on headquarters in the studio. They created a room for the underground bread cartel, inspired from a popular YouTube video called The Bread Bank. I decided to try and remake the YouTube video using their build for my second animation. After four hours and two days, it was, it was finished, with no audio because I was too lazy to add it. But it was still an accomplishment to finish it. With the success of my previous animations, I was ready to start something new. There's a cool video I loved called Suction Cup Man, and I wanted to remake it. There were three major problems, though. One, I needed to make a completely new map to make it for the scenery. Two, the animation was two minutes long, the longest I've ever worked on. Three, it had complex movement instead of just basic poses like I'd done before. I knew about these challenges when I started the project, and two months after the start of the project, they were still present. Let me back up a bit. On March 14th, I created the game for my animation. I spent an hour or so constructing the map needed for the animation. I came back to it every so often and finished the actual scenery after around five hours of work across a week or so. Once the animating began, it became obvious this was not an easy task. The animating was tedious and time-consuming, while not being too difficult. It was putting in a lot of time between March 24th and April 13th. I was making steady progress towards an achievable end goal when suddenly I just stopped working on it. I wasn't really getting anything out of it other than working towards the end, so I just stopped. On March 31st, during my prime time animating, I decided to make my own game. No, like an actual game this time, instead of a building you could walk around in. Like, like an actual game. I took heavy inspiration from another Roblox game, which is based around fighting with melee weapons on a cool map. I wanted an excuse to make a cool map, code some weapons, and make custom movement. So I created an excuse. I worked on it for a few days, making a map and some custom movement animations to mess around with. When the Suction Cup Man project stopped being worked on, I worked on this instead. After a while, I had custom movement animations, a knife that could either slice or stab, and a ragdoll on death instead of the normal disassembly. I'm looking to improve the animations and switch up the map at the moment. My friend Riken recently asked me if I was ever going to finish Suction Cup Man, so I decided to work on it some more and finally get it done. I picked up where I left off on the hardest part, which is where the business guy falls off the tower. I had to animate it not once, but twice because of an error when saving. I realized this could be part of my project, so I got the cast of my reanimation to voice it. Because the original swears a lot. Anyways, I'll play it here. I hope you enjoy the two minutes of animation that took roughly 25 hours to complete. I'm finally finished with it after two months, so here it is. Suction Cup Man. Hey, stop climbing my tower with suction cups. Frick you, I'm climbing your tower with suction cups. Why my tower? Why not your tower? You're smudging my windows, idiot. I'll smudge your windows all I want. Look at me go. Go suction cup someone else's tower. That sounds very suggestive. I'ma kill you. Get off my tower. What are you, a criminal? It's an expression. Get the frick off my tower. No, frick you. Frick you, what's your name? Suction cup man. Yeah, right. What's your name? Da -da 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 -da. Suction cup man, look at me go! Get off my freaking tower this instant! I can't! Why the heck not? I can't go down, idiot. I can only go up. What? I gotta reach my top and wrap back down. You can't just turn around? Of course I freaking can. What are you stupid? It can't be that hard. I don't see you climbing a freaking tower with suction cups. Give me a minute. What are you doing? I have plungers! And oh, this is getting real! Well, I'm coming for you, idiot! You are going to kill yourself! Freaky, watch me! 
for a guy in a suit, you're pretty freaking stupid. Frick you, I didn't become a billionaire by being an idiot. I have four degrees. Hey, get the frick down. Shut up, idiot. This is illegal. I know that, but frick you anyways. Frick you. Frick you. Frick you. Hey, I wrote you a song. What? It goes a little something like this. Frick you. Take him down. Frick you, you can't kill suction cup man, look at me go! Well, son of a gun. And that brings us to today. I've been working in Roblox Studio for over a year now, and I've made nine places so far, with endless opportunities ahead. I'm working on my own game right now, with the hopes that maybe it will become something cool. I hope you enjoyed learning about my experience with Roblox Studio. You should try it out for yourself. I highly recommend it. And as always, thanks for watching.